Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know that you will find interesting, inspiring, and so much fun. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Okay, so so many people now are getting ready to sell everything they own and live abroad. Or you hear people selling their houses and buying an RV and just traveling all over the country. Not my jam. However, I have met somebody who, first of all, I think is phenomenal, but she lives a nomadic lifestyle. Her name is Liza Lomax. And as of today, she's in Portugal. Everybody say hi to Liza. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Liza, my <laughs> friend, how are you? I'm doing good. i am had a few hiccups, you know. Yeah. Making the transition over, which we've talked about before. Yes. And we're going to talk about it again. A, exactly. You're getting in the groove and getting things going. So Good. yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Oh, uh, thank you so much for joining us. So like I said, in the intro, you are in Portugal. Tell me where in Portugal are you and what are you doing out there? <laughs> <laughs> so I am in, so I'm on an island called Madeira. So it's a Portuguese island. It's located closer to Morocco. Mm. So the temperature is like 63 to 75 year round. Mm. Um, however, it does get cold. Even if it's a couple degrees difference, it still gets cold. Like I've got a blanket on my lap because <laughs> it's chilly because a lot of European homes mm -hmm. do not have heating or well, homes down, you know, specifically in Spain and Portugal, nothing don't have heaters. I'm mm -hmm. like heating systems sure. or cooling systems. It's like you open the doors oh, wow. or you close the doors. Mm -hmm. So oh my gosh, it's gotten a little while taken me a little bit to get acclimated to yeah. the, the, um, for temperature wise. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you get to live this amazing nomadic life. Tell us what it is that you do for a living that allows you to live like this. So I am a life coach. Um, I specialize in emotional eating. So I get to help uh, guide empathic and highly sensitive folks heal their emotional blocks with their bodies, with their mind and with food. And that allows me to, I, I work online mm -hmm. so I can be pretty much anywhere in the world. And my whole thought process is like, we have no pets, no plants and no kids. So why not travel the world? Yeah. Wow. Now, how long have you been living like this? So it's, it started, uh, started pre COVID and then we had the whole entire year mapped out for traveling and exploring. We had, you know, time on the West coast and we were going to be in Hawaii. And then we had a trip to Alaska and then we were going to be on the East coast. And we had a bunch of different things, um, lined up and then we had a trip to Russia that we were going to do oh, wow. and then COVID hit. So what had happened is we had sold everything in our apartment, stopped the lease in our apartment, got rid of everything, was ready to go, had the whole car loaded up, ready to go. And then COVID hit, then the shelter in place hit and we're like, crap, where do we go? <laughs> How big <laughs> was your like, car? Oh, no. <laughs> it, I mean, it's not, it wasn't that big. It's a, it was a Subaru Forester, right. so an older model. So, I mean, it's, you know, whatever we could fit in there is what we took. So mm. Um, we actually ended up moving in with my in-laws. Um, they lived in the, close in the area where we were at and which we thought was just going to be a couple months, but then it turned into three months and then four months and then five months and then seven months. And we're wow. like, no, we need to have this. We need to start this happening. Mm -hmm. And so then what we did was we went down to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we kind of made a trek down to North Carolina. So everything that we could put in fit in our vehicle is what we took with us. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much our home. Everything in our vehicle was our home wow. and, uh, went down to North Carolina and we liked it so much. We just ended up staying longer. Nice. And then we came back up to Minnesota where my in-laws are mm -hmm. and stayed through the summer. And then we went to Maine. We spent <laughs> some time in Maine, which was beautiful. If you, if, if you or your listeners ever go to Maine, I highly suggest Acadia national park like be okay. somewhere around there because it's just stunningly beautiful. It's just amazing. It's just 
it's, wow. it's just breathtaking. Mm-hmm. And um, then we ended up uh, going down the East Coast and we stayed in Florida. So we were in the Jacksonville Palm Coast area. Mm-hmm. And then we made our way back up to Jan up into into January, back up to Minnesota in January for oh, wait, our trip wait. to you went to Minnesota in exactly. January. In January. What I were know. you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, our flight to, to Portugal took took out, came out, went out mm. from Minneapolis, St. Okay. Paul. So that's why we were in um we went to Minnesota. Mm. So uh, we were only there for a few weeks <laughs> and then we made the trek to Lisbon. So we stayed in Lisbon, so Portugal. So, mm-hmm. uh, we were in Lisbon for about a week and, um, just a vacation and things like that. And I ended up two days before I left, I ended up pinching a nerve on my back, oh, wow. um, fun times. <laughs> and then I got here and started seeing an acupuncturist, got here to Madeira that's mm-hmm. here and um ended up getting covid wow <laughs> and so we've been on this island for a month now and i'm like we haven't been able to, a chance to explore sure. um well my partner also hurt their ankle um so we're kind of like you know like a hot mess kind of thing you know i'm like <laughs> so we're just like trying yeah, to yeah sounds like the life <laughs> <laughs> right but we got here and first of all, the people were just amazing. They took really good care of me. I was, mm. I was, I could hardly even walk. Wow. Um, so they did all these necessary things to take care of me and make sure mm. that I got on the plane and I was comfortable and everything was wow. taken care of. And the people, but and we got here and this is, was the same way. It's like the people here are, are just lovely. They're just beautiful. It's just, the food is really good. The energy yeah. is really nice. Mm-hmm. We were here for like four days and we both looked at each other and we're like, this may be our forever home. We may seriously really? be considering this our forever home. Yes. That was one of the After was we make ask. the loop de loop. Yeah, I was yes. going to say, <laughs> are you ever planning to land someplace and stay forever? And you just said, this could be it. It could be, it could Mm -hmm. be. So after here, so we'll be here until April and then we'll um, head to Ireland. We'll be in Ireland for a few months and then we'll be in the UK or Scotland area. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be in uh, Denmark where my family is from. Wow. And then we'll be in Italy. And then we're trying to figure out um, if we, if there's a chance we can come back here, mm-hmm. it's a little bit different because I'm technically an EU citizen, so mm-hmm. I can stay in areas a little bit longer than most sure. people can. Mm-hmm. Um, however, my partner is not, so mm. we have to figure out what the legalities mean, yeah. things like that. So, is, so Liza, as else. you're doing all of this, is this a lifestyle you would recommend for everyone or does it take a certain kind of person, if you will, to live like this? You know, I think everybody can, it's which is whether or not they choose to want to do that or not. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, a lot of us have a mentality that um, we grew up in a a home where maybe our grandparents or even our parents lived in the depression era. Mm -hmm. So we had the mentality of holding on to everything. Mm-hmm. holding and let, you know, not letting go of anything and, and growing up in the same house we, we grew up in or living in the same house or living in the same town or the neighborhood or that kind of thing. We held on to these things. And some people get to a point in their life where they're just like, I, I don't want this any longer. I want right. to be free. I want to be, you know, I don't want to have any, you know, things tying me down. I don't need to have a home. I don't need to have a car. I don't mm-hmm. need to have all these things. Right. I don't, I don't need to have all this stuff, mm. you know? And when you get to that point, then it's like, that's that. I mean, if you can think about that, think about like, you know, question, ask yourself, you know, mm-hmm. can I live without a home? Can I live without a car? Can I live like, I mean, and you have a home. I mean, right. home, to me, home is wherever I'm at. Home is mm-hmm. wherever I'm, I'm, you know, home is with me. Right. Um, but if you get to a point where you're like, you don't need to have like that, that you go to, you go on vacation, then you come back, you know, mm-hmm. or you don't need to have all this stuff because right. we collect, we collect and collect and collect and collect all stuff, just yeah. stuff. And it's like, if you can get to that point where you're like, you're ready to release and let go and just, just purge and mm-hmm. 
let it all go, then yeah, that's perfect. You know, right. it's perfect for you. But, and a lot of people realize during the, when the pandemic happened mm-hmm. that they're like, oh, well, my job's at my home. I can, I am remote. My kids are remote right now. So mm-hmm. why don't we just rent an RV and travel right. to the United States or something? Like that? <laughs> there was a lot of parents that were doing that. That's true. That's true. And then a lot of people were like, wait a minute, let's, let's keep continuing this because yeah. we like this kind of lifestyle. And I'm not saying that we'll do this for, for forever. I sure. mean, we, we eventually, I mean, we love to travel, mm-hmm. um, but we, you know, I mean, we just loved it. We love it here. Yeah. It's just, it's just a very peaceful Island. And you don't feel like some people say, Oh, you be, you're on an Island. You feel trapped. And it's like, mm-hmm. you don't even feel like you're on an Island here. Right. Everything you could possibly want is here on this Island. That is amazing. So let me ask you then, how is it that y'all find housing everywhere? Do you plan this ahead or do you go in and stay with relatives or just crash at random people's house? How, what kind of planning goes into a lifestyle like this? You have to plan. So luckily I'm blessed with my partner who loves to research and loves to plan and have all the details and all the things mm-hmm. taken care of. And, um, you have to, you have to, you know, like every place that we're going to, we have a place lined up. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a space lined up and, you know, we get a little picky. Like, I mean, first of all, they have to have, you know, internet, definitely high speed internet. You Mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's like we both work from home. So of course that's the number one thing that we need to have. Mm -hmm. And like here on Madeira, it is the fastest internet speed that we've ever come across. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting, but I mean, there's certain things that you have to have, you know Mm -hmm. I mean? So you have to plan. You can't Mm -hmm. just like, I mean, you can certainly go on a whim and do whatever you want. And Mm -hmm. you know, if that's, if that's your, you know, that's the way you want to do things then go right ahead. But Mm -hmm. um, you have to plan, especially when you do something of this magnitude and we're not planning on coming back to the United States. Like this is, I mean, Europe is permanently our home. Really? So you're not planning to come back to the U S Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, wow. I mean, maybe for a little visit, sure. a little visit, but yeah, but no, I mean, I, that's, I, that was a huge uh, reason why I got my Danish passport back mm-hmm. too, was mm-hmm. to, um, to establish an EU citizenship. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. Liza, that is awesome. So mm-hmm. then in what ways has this nomadic lifestyle changed your view on things, view, like say of America, view of the travel industry, if you will. Um, so there was a couple of people I talked to not too long ago and, and I know some people are afraid to travel and some mm-hmm. people are afraid to what's going to happen. And, uh, it was easy for us. I mean, it Mm -hmm. wasn't, I mean, you just follow the rules, just follow the regulations, whatever needs to be, you know, whatever paperwork needs to be filed or paperwork needs to be done. Just, you've got to do it. If, if you want to travel, that's what you have to do to travel. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's just, you have to, you you have to have all your ducks in a row. I mean, you you Mm got to have all the, all the things and, um, yeah. I mean, it just, it, it, it's, I don't know how to, how to explain it. It's sure. just you, you know, do what you uh, got to do to get you done do. what you want to get done. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Does Definitely. it change your worldview living like this? Um, a little bit. It, you know, I, I, I like to, um, envelop myself in the, the culture and the, mm-hmm. the people and the ambiance and the, just the area. And mm-hmm. like, we've been attempting, we're, we're going to do more, but we've been attempting to learn Portuguese. Oh, wow. And because for me personally, it's like, mm-hmm. if I'm going to go into your country, I want to be able to speak the language to you. I want to be able wow. to, I mean, I'm coming into your country, mm-hmm. you know, I should at least uh, for me, that seems like a form of respect to at least sure. learn the language so mm-hmm. that I can communicate with you because not everybody speaks English. Right. And English is a, is a very hard language to learn. I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, people that speak English don't even know how to speak English. So it's, <laughs> don't get me know, started. So, I know. <laughs> right. Right. So, um, it's, it, you know, it's changed a little bit. It's like, I, um, you know, with, with, in, 
you know, enveloping yourself in the area and the people and the ambiance and all that stuff, it, it's, you see things a little bit differently. And Mm -hmm. there was a lot, there's a lot of things, I mean, without getting in politically, you know, talking about anything, that stuff, it's just, there's, there's always stuff everywhere. There's Mm -hmm. always something that's happening somewhere or somebody's going to be dissatisfied about something. Mm -hmm. And so there's always going to be that there. So that, that doesn't change. Sure. I mean, it's, you know, we don't all live with rose color glasses on. It's like, <laughs> there's always things that are going to yeah. come up and, but it's just, it's how you choose to handle it or how you choose to be involved in it or how, right. you, how you view it yourself. That is just so interesting. Look, you guys, this conversation can go on forever. And because I know Liza, it's going to just so you know, but don't worry, (laughs) you can reach out to her. She, all of her contact information is going to be in the description below. So you will have a chance to reach out, ask her questions for yourself. And don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. You know how much that means to us. Liza, my friend, before I let you go... We have to play a game. Okay. Okay. So the game is called this or that. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things and you off the top of your head. Tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? Okay. All right. All right. Let's do this. Flowers or plants? Plants. Hotel or tent? Ooh, depends. <laughs> um, hotel. I'm surprised. I thought you would say tent just because of I the way you live. S- yes, I would say that. However, mm-hmm. with my back the way it is, okay. I'm a little, uh, <laughs> a little biased <laughs> so, right now. Okay. Right? Water biased. park or amusement park? Mm, amusement park. Okay. Practical joker, or you don't play like that? Um, oh, goodness. Uh, I'm in the middle. So sometimes I like a joke. Sometimes I don't like a joke. Yeah. <laughs> can right. I answer that way? Yes, you can. This is your thing. <laughs> okay. Candlelight okay. or moonlight? Ooh, moonlight. Yeah. Are you a planner or you make it up as you go? <laughs> My partner's a planner. I make it up as I go. <laughs> I knew that, but I was going to let you answer it. <laughs> Are you the one that goes all day or do you need a nap? Oh, I love naps. <laughs> I know I naps are everything. Naps. Me too. Yes. <laughs> when you're talking, is it pecan or pecan? Pecan. Okay. When you meet someone, do you notice their eyes or their smile? Oh, their eyes. Mm. Are you a words of affirmation person or an acts of service kind of gal? Mm, I'm a physical touch person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, what would you tell your younger self now? Oh, what would I tell my younger self now? Um, it's okay. You're going to get through it. Yeah. That's kind of huge. You know, because when we're younger, we just swear the world is ending at every moment. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) There is an existential crisis around every corner. Every second. Yep. Every second of every day. That's right. Liza, thank you so much for your time and for joining us. I appreciate you so much. Yes, I appreciate you too as well. Thank you. All right, everybody. That's it for this time. But we'll see you next time on Extra.